G'day and welcome back to the Aussie Shed. Today I thought I'd take a look at the carriage of the mini lathe. Uh, I noticed issues with it right from the word go. The hand wheel was quite tight. Something felt a bit funny. The, the half nuts weren't locking in properly onto the lead screw. Turned her over and, and bugger me, straight away, there it is. Look at this. You can see the drive gear that's propelled by the hand wheel is protruding above the housing. So, which makes it impossible to fit a cover. And uh, at this point, I would assume that it just hasn't properly been fitted. You can see that, you can actually see the bearing uh, poking up from the recess that it's meant to be pushed down into. And if I try to turn it on its own, it feels like the bearing's buggered. There's a it feels like it feels like one of the ball bearings inside the race is square. It's just ka clunk, ka clunk, ka clunk, ka clunk, ka clunk. So, my assumption: someone's tried to belt it in on a bit of an angle, give it a good whack. It wouldn't go down. They've buggered the bearing, and they've just thought, ah, stuff it, and just put it together and send her out. So I guess it's up to me to fix it. Stay tuned and see what happens. And there she is. You can definitely feel that the bearing's not right. It's shagged. But I just happen to have here a replacement bearing. So let's get this sucker off, press the new bearing on and have a bit of a look at this hole. Just first you need to make sure that uh, this recess has been cut deep enough for the bearing that there's not something wrong with the housing. It, uh, yeah, I can't imagine there really would be. I'd say it's more just the the clown that's pressed the bearing in. But we'll have a look anyway. First things first. Get this old piece of junk off. Or oh, sorry, this new piece of junk off. And put a decent bearing on there. And there you go. Through the magic of YouTube, the bearing is now off. Oh yeah, nice new bearing. I have a special technique for pressing small bearings on like this. I find if I mount it in position and just hit it down really hard on the bench, it'll go down like this. So there it is. Now I think it's time to measure the casing. She should fit, but only just. While I'm at it, there's a bit of a burr, a bit of a Raymond burr in the bottom of this hole here, right around this edge. You can sort of see the edge of it there. That's where the, uh, the other do lackey, where this guy goes in, it'll be rubbing on the center. So I might just uh, put a slight chamfer on the inside of that hole. Do the same thing to this one here. Make sure this bearing's gonna sit down properly. Two seconds. All right, let's get this back in. I'll just give you a bit of insight to what I'm doing here. Here's our piece. Sitting up on there, hole for the shaft to go down through, just a simple socket. You can see what I've done here. I've got two pieces of just one mil copper shim stock going between the gap between the gear and the bearing because the bearing doesn't sit completely hard up against the gear, as you'd imagine, because it wouldn't rotate if it did. 
So we have a, uh, a one millimetre gap. What that means though is when the, when the bearing is pushed down in, the force of the friction generated on the side will try to push the outside of the race up and there's nothing actually holding it other than the, than the ball bearings inside. So by shimming the gap between the gear and the, uh, the, the outer race of the bearing means that as we force this down, it transfers directly onto that without it being able to move up and damage the bearing. Uh, it's only a little bearing, they're quite easy to damage. Uh, the shop, the, uh, the Aussie Shed does come equipped with a press, but for a little job like this, it's just not worth mucking around with. You can just tap it, lightly tap it in with a hammer. Easy mate, easy. Okay, here we go. Well, that escalated quickly. Let me explain to you what happened off camera. You saw me trying to tap that in and it started getting very, very, very tight. And I thought, oh no, something's not right here. I better get this back out and have another look at it. So I just carefully tapped it back out. Fortunately, because I was treating it with love, I didn't damage the bearing. But uh, what I noticed upon further inspection is the sides of the hole are actually tapered so it was getting tighter and tighter as it was getting to the bottom so uh, I guess the cutter that they were using to drill the uh, drill the recess for that bearing was probably worn and it started to form a bit of a taper on the end and that's what happens so unfortunately I had to uh, had to carefully recut run around the outside and get it back to being right and now it is beautiful and as you can see she's now sitting in the right position just below the surface turns very nicely beautiful all lines up very good so on to making a cover I've already pre-drilled and tapped a couple of holes in here. So uh, next thing is I'll just make a quick Perspex cover for this. There's a million videos of that on, on YouTube. Whack it on and uh, we'll have a bit of a fiddle with this guy. And see what the go with this half nut is and why it's not locking in properly. Beautiful. Welcome back to the Aussie Shed. So after a quick analysis of the half nuts and the mechanism that engages the half nuts, it's come to my attention that the problem appears to be that the, the shaft that connects the handle to the half, uh, the half nuts, these two holes here, these two detents uh, for the ball bearing that sits in a spring that mounts in this hole here in the side of the housing. So that what that's what gives you your positive locking when you engage the half nut. This turns and the ball bearing is forced into one of those holes with a spring. Okay, so from my analysis, it appears that the for a start, these things are ridicul drilled ridiculously too close together, and the problem appears to be that the the detent position that um, has the half nuts closed doesn't fully close the half nuts so any reason why i can't flip this 180 degrees re-drill it to where i want it to be re-drill the detent for the handle and start again because that's just atrocious it's not even close like it it doesn't open fully either it, it's sort of half engaged and then when you fully engage it it doesn't fully engage Another example of fine Chinese mini lathe craftsmanship. All right, I'll re-drill this and get back to you. Welcome back. Well, that went exceptionally well. You can see we now have a very positive 
engagement and disengagement of the half nuts. And how I achieved this was by uh, drilling the holes. Oh, just struggling around the camera there. How I achieved this was by drilling the holes a little bit deeper. And the holes obviously now don't run into each other. So it was just a matter of turning the uh, turning the shaft 180 degrees, sitting the the lugs square across uh, across the jaws in this direction, which gives you your full open position. Drop a transfer punch down in the uh, drop a transfer punch down in the hole where the spring and ball goes. Light tap with the hammer. I'll just Move the jaws into the fully closed position. Once again, transfer punch, a little bit of a tap on the top. Take the piece back out, run it over to the drill press, uh, re-drill the holes to a depth that uh, suits good engagement. Not too deep, obviously. Uh, and there you have it. It's really good now. Very, very positive indeed. It I'll just throw the half nut in there. It clamps extremely well on the hard nut. Clamps down very tightly and just full engagement every time. A bit hard to hold here with the hands, but really, really nice, tight, positive engagement. Very happy. well worth doing the modifications to this carriage a new bearing in the drive wheel a slight modification of the bearing housing in the drive wheel because it was cut on a taper and uh, frankly it was a little tiny bit shallow so now perfect beautiful engages uh, engages nice and smooth with the uh, the driven wheel the half nuts are now functioning very positive, very correctly. And I've just finished making, just needs a little bit more of a trim, a, uh, a, a gear cover, a dust cover for the gears here. So uh, when this is finished, I'll grease her all up, grease this section all up, and this piece is pretty much done. Add that to the done list. Massive improvement massive improvement on a simple piece like this um, and as you can see from the work that was done it would have been a complete pain in the bum to use this really really hard to turn hand wheel clunk a clunk a clunk a clunk a clunk half nuts like a wet rag not even closing properly just soft and you know just absolutely terrible and uh, so now Beautiful. Certainly will make things uh, things go a lot smoother when using the lathe and lead to a lot less frustration. So yeah, there's that piece. Fantastic. Thanks for watching.